So uh, what are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at an eye tracking study in which um, we're trying to mean? find out. Uh, Sorry, so, what does that mean, an eye tracking study? Oh, so an eye tracking study is uh, an interesting device that you allows you to see very accurately where a person is looking. So we can have a person look at an image, uh, like an advertisement in a magazine or on television, uh, or even a moving video, and we can in real time see where they're looking, where they stop, where they fixate, and then how much time they spend on each point in the image, where they move, what they see first, what they see second. And this is giving us an idea about visual attention. What, if you're advertising, you want to grab people's attention to your product, maybe to your brand, maybe to the product itself on, on the screen or on the page of the, of the magazine. And so how do you know for sure that you're getting the person to look where you want them to look? What if they're not looking at your product, they're looking across the page at the, you know, your, your, comp your competition, at their products. So what is it about an image in, a, in an advertisement that grabs attention and holds attention? So we can actually find this out by carefully looking at where people's eyes are gazing and, and measuring it and then recording that. So that's what an eye tracker does. And so in this experiment, uh, one of the undergraduates working in my, in my lab, Lisa Harvey, is actually looking at a bunch of different advertisements. And her hypothesis is that we'll probably grab a lot of attention to human faces, that the direction of attention might be determined by where a face is pointing. So if a face is pointing towards a product, then you might get more attention on the product. If my product is over here on my right and I'm looking to the left, then maybe I'm going to direct attention to the competitors of product on the opposite page of the magazine. So I might be, you know, advertising my jeans over here. I'm looking over there and saying, what I'm saying with my body language is, don't look at my jeans, look at, you know, the jeans of those guys over there. So that's one, one hypothesis that where the person is facing and where their eyes are looking will direct attention to your product. Also, another possibility is that where your hand is, is moving, if your hand is holding the product, that fact that you're holding the product may itself direct attention. And this is um, partly from evolution. The hypothesis is that in our evolutionary past, uh, when it was important for us to look at what was in the hands of other people. Is it fruit for me to eat or a weapon that might kill me? So I really need to find out what's in a person's hand. So by having your product in somebody's hand, you know, in the advertisement, you might direct more attention to it. If they're using the product, um, that might, you know, bring more attention to the product and might make you more likely to, to buy the product. So it's really about how you use the different features in an image to direct attention where you want and to make sure it goes where you want. But uh, how does this relate to, to what you are uh, looking for, your new world view? Um, well, this is part of a, a bigger picture. So my, my new worldview about, you know, we don't see reality as it is, it's all a user interface, is, is based on evolution. And so the idea here is we're actually using evolution, evolutionary psychology, as well in its broader sense to understand where people attend. And this is a practical application. So in some sense, we all have user interfaces. We're, we're, um, we're all playing with user interfaces. Advertisers are always exploring user interfaces and exploiting them. So once we understand that our sensory systems, in particular our visual system, is a user interface, and you know the rules of the interface, and we learn them a lot from evolutionary psychology, then you can start to play with that interface, manipulate it, and if you're, you know, if you're an advertiser, you can intelligently ma manipulate people to, to get them to see what you want, to believe, what, perhaps to believe what you want, and to buy what you want, ultimately. Okay. So you're here today to um, participate in a study that evaluate gaze patterns and specifically you'll be viewing advertisements on the computer screen. Um, basically, I ask you to be as natural as possible. It's kind of hard to do having an eye tracker when you had to be natural. So mm -hmm. but just like try to pretend there's nothing in you, just you're viewing it as if you would do it in real life. Um, so you, first we're going to start with uh, making sure that the chin rest is comfortable and the height is normal. So I, I, I need to ask you please have a seat. So let's make sure that the position of a chin rest is good. Try it. What do you think? Should it be taller? A little bit. A little bit, like higher. Okay, let's make it higher. Okay. 
Okay, so now please stand up. So I need to tell you a couple of things about the eye tracker. So eye tracker is a little bit moody device. So um, it requires a very precise calibration. So uh, I might need to ask you to do calibration process a few times for me. It does mean that you're doing something wrong. That means that um, we just need um, a little bit of adjustments, to do a little bit of adjustments. So you might feel slight pressure on the top of your head, on, on, a, on your back, uh, on the back of your head, but it should go away after we take off the eye tracker. So just give me a second. Okay, that looks good. Please uh, take a step. Please take a step back over here and face me. Good. Oops. Wonderful. So I'm going to start with your left eye. Okay. How are you doing today? I'm good. Good. Oh, that's good. Are you done with your midterms? No, I have one tomorrow. Oh. That's... I'm so happy I was done last week. You're one of the lucky ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the idea is that the eye tracker sensor should be should be pointing directly to a pupil and at the same time should not interfere with your viewing path. Mm -hmm. So let me know if you feel like they are too much on your way. Looks good. And uh, this is my left. Okay. So now, how does it feel? That's fine. Okay. Good. So I'm going to grab your tail over here and move this chair. So um, let me help you to get closer. So you'll have to have a seat. Have a seat and move closer. Carefully squeeze your chin and put it in a chin rest. Okay, without distorting the sensors. Okay, I have markers on, which is good. I'm losing your left pupil, which is not good. But we're gonna fix it. Mm -hmm. So this is actually the longest process, and then we're going to do some fun. Okay. Okay. So, let's start. So first we're gonna actually input some data about you. Let's see. What's your age? 21. Gender, female. Mm -hmm. What should I put for your ethnicity? Hispanic. And right to left-handed? Right. Okay, good. So, we're gonna start by doing calibration process. So, oh, my left eye is still jumping. Okay. Um, look up, down, left, right. Okay, still doesn't like the left eye. Let me give, let me do a quick adjustment here. So then press space bar, focus it, and then press space bar, focus and press press space bar. So. Don't rush, so mm. to take your time. So um, again, don't move your head, try not to move or talk, and just focus and then press space. Mm. Okay? So let me know when you're ready. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's start.
can't see it. You can't see it, it's mm -hmm. on your way? Okay, so it seems like the eye tracker is too much in your way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. How did it feel? It's fine. Try to look up for me now. Is it better? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Good. it one more time oh now let me fix the focus over here okay so now let's do it one more time remember when first focus then press space you ready mm -hmm. okay I need to ask you to slow down just a tiny bit and we're gonna validate this result. So let's do it one more time. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna do it one more time. Just I uh, need to adjust. Okay, so now let's validate. So let's do it one more time. Our, our old definition of, of uh, a conscious agent, right, was uh, involved um, <clears throat> Markovian kernels from basically one set to the other set. But our new definition involves uh, Markovian kernels that look like this. Mm -hmm. So, um, using my my new notation mm -hmm. uh, to X. All right. So that this is really the previous guy, and this is the current guy. Right. Current. And of course, this is also the current world state, right? Correct. So, um, with, the, with the previous definition, this was missing. Right. And uh, we proved the invention of space theorem in that context. So, uh, now what I wanted to do was to extend it to the new definition. Okay. And for the new definition, I found that I had to make some assumptions. Okay. Okay. So, the first of all, uh, 
let's just define the fiber, I have to spell it in the American way, the fiber of, say, P, okay, right. is, it, I mean, this consists of the set of all world points W, right. or world states W, such that P of W is equal to um, X. So this is the fiber of P over X right. in big X. <coughs> Okay, mm -hmm. so I write my x's two ways. Anyway, so um, what we have to require now is that, I mean, this is right. the old, That's the old definition. Old right. definition. Right. Okay, so for the new definition is now going to say that the fiber of P is equal to the set of all W in W such that P W, you call the fibers, say, F sub P. Now you have to call the fibers something like F sub P. Um, maybe put an X prime underneath it because that's right. part of the parameterization of the fiber now. Right. Okay? Right. So in order to simplify things, uh, so far what I've had to do is to take this, this, these particular fibers and make an assumption which I call the homogeneity assumption. Okay. Okay, so homogeneity then is the assumption that F P X prime, this set of all fibers, which is indexed by P as well as by X prime, mm -hmm. is independent of X prime. Okay. Okay. So the question I have of you, I mean, this is a perfectly simple mathematical uh, assumption, but the question I have of you as, as a perception scientist is, does this make sense? So it's not that the fiber are the same, because I was going to say, if you're, if you're saying that for each X prime, no. it's the same fiber. Okay, no, good. I know. Right, I right, right, right. I'm very careful about that. So, oh, so, okay. so okay. here's the fiber okay. over uh, X, okay. and this, this whole thing is happening, mm -hmm. let's say, I should put, what am I calling it? Um, yeah, let, let's just use the term F x prime for this, okay. because p is the same anyway. So, so this is good. Okay. So, uh, th so this is f x good. prime good. Yes. of x, okay? Mm -hmm. And this over here is f x double prime right. of x for right. some other right. x double prime. Right, right. But, I'm, but they don't know how to prove the theorem yet. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to extend it to that situation. Is it your intuition mathematically that we wouldn't be able to prove it, or, or just that it would be much more difficult? Uh, right. At the moment, I don't really have an... In It'll be more difficult, definitely. I don't well, have any intuition as I, to... I, I, you know, it's like once I, w I walked into my advisor's office in, in, when I was doing my PhD thesis, and I said, if there's any justice in, this, in the world, the lemma I stated over here has to be true. And he said, write it yeah, down. Write, write it down. Right, exactly. And it wasn't true. Right. And, yeah, and that right. led to further, you know, work and, and uh, new theorems. So but, I, I don't my know. My concern is that with, with time, mm -hmm. as, as you evolve, yeah. as your perceptions evolve, it may change That's fine. fundamentally how you're interacting with the world, including changing the fiber structure. Absolutely. But w this is not about evolving. This is about a particular CA at a p in, in, its, in its given state, oh, yeah. having repeated observations, oh, which then may lead to evolution. Oh, I see. So, oh, got gotcha. you. Okay, so this, this yeah. we could look at a case where you've actually evolved to a certain place and we're looking at you at that time. Yeah. And, and then it's and homogeneous. Or during the, even over a period of time, I mean, uh, evolution takes much longer than a period of time, right? It's, it's okay. a long-term evolution. It's, it, 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 my given state as a conscious agent right mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. allows me to see the world according to a certain set. Right. I mean, I'm not even seeing these, really. Right. I'm, I'm seeing, all the, you know, <laughs> the exits. Really. the projections. Yeah. Yeah. The projections okay. down here. Right. So I'm really uh, uh, imputing some structure back on the world, okay. which, by the way, is the measurable structure of P, mm -hmm. and, uh, essentially. Exactly. I mean, well, if uh, with certain with further assumptions. Yeah. yeah, P with W on You have to assume right. it's atomic also.